A Year of Learning by Dr. Paul Koningsberg in memory of his brother, Dr. Sam Koningsberg, Shimon Rubin ben Leibush, Ed Goldberg's cousin, Nissen Hara Nissen ben Fardosa. Paula and Bob Bromberg in memory of their dear friend, Julian Smith, Yehuda ben Yisrael. Malcolm Mann in memory of her family murdered in the Holocaust. Arav Tzvi Hirsch ben Shlomo Yaakov, Sarah Bat Ephraim, Yisrael David ben Arav Tzvi Hirsch, Ephraim ben Arav Tzvi Hirsch, Adia Bas Harav Tzvi Hirsch, Miriam Bas Harav Tzvi Hirsch, Pesel Bas Harav Tzvi Hirsch, Shalom Ben Harav Tzvi Hirsch, Shlomo Ben Yaakov Ben Harav Tzvi Hirsch, Shmuel Ben Harav Tzvi Hirsch. Many friends of Dr. Marvin Blush, Moshe Shalom Ben Yitzchak Halevi, friends of Toby Paris, Sarah Tova Bat Yisrael Dov, friends of Malka Levi, Malka Bat Yosef, Friends of Avi Gitler, Avramea ben Shimon, Cheryl Scher, her children and grandchildren, in memory of her uncle, founding member of BRS, Dr. Israel Brook, Yisrael ben Arav Akiva. Have a month of learning by Lynn Rappaport, in memory of her husband, Avram ben Ben Sion Hakohen. A week of learning by Minnie Shavrik, in memory of her father, Yechiel Yaakov ben Meshulam Nissen as well as a week of learning by Ron and Susan Podolsky, in memory of his father, Tzvi Ben Pinchas. May the Neshamas have an Aliyah, Krank, or Afiyah, Velti, Yashir, Shem, Matzliyah, and the Chol B'nai Israel, good Geben Shdiyah. Right. Okay. All right. Okay, so I'm reminding us that <coughs> they will not be giving a Shir tomorrow or... Uh, Thursday morning, but I'll pick up again on Friday, okay? Again, not sure because of the Zoom connections where we'll be. So we'll go as far as we can in the time we're allotted this morning, okay? Samachay uh, Amud Aleph, where we start today, uh, goes back to... Uh, I guess I would say that motif of intoxication right. is the best I can uh, present it. Okay. Amar Rabbi Chanina says, Rabbi Chanina, Kol hamafik magain bishat ga'ava. I'm going to translate this. Who, it, the direct translation would be, whoever passes a shield. Okay. During the time of... Uh, Oh, let's call it uh, uh, haughtiness, okay? But the translation the Mefarshim give, both between Art Scroll and uh, Korem, based on Rashi and Tosafot, who give different explanations, is that if somebody seeks the protection of prayer, okay, after they've become intoxicated. Okay? So green vechot min tsarot ba'ado. Okay? Basically what it implies is that uh, this, uh, this is going to seal up the limit, contain the troubles that have occurred to that person. Okay? Shinamar, as it says in a pasuk, Ga'ava afike maginin sagur chotem tsar. Okay? The intoxicated one who bypasses prayer, trouble is contained and sealed for him. Now the problem is, what is the meaning of the word mafik? And therefore the Gemara continues, my mashma dahai afik. What's the meaning of this term afik? Lishna da'avori hu? Is this uh, really language that says like passing over, a bypassing? Dichtim, as we cite a Pasuk, namely that says as follows, Achai bagdu kumon nachal, ba'afik nachalim ya'avoru. So that Pasuk translated, my brethren have bestrayed me like a stream, like the moment of streams they have passed by. It would seem that the word afik and the word ya'avoru have the same intent, the same meaning. Okay. Rabbi Yochanan Amar, 
Kol she'enu mafik itmar. Rabbi Yochanan, however, suggests the verse could be interpreted another way. Okay? Namely, when it says that it she'enu mafik itmar, when it says it doesn't express it, my mashma dahai mafik, lishna degaluihu. What is it, the meaning then of this phrase, mafik? It's the language of showing something being revealed, okay, being expressed. Dikhti, as it says elsewhere in another pasuk, okay, which is, vayeru afike mayim viglu mostot tevel. The channels of water became visible and the foundations of the earth became revealed. So they both cite psukim, in which the term afik is used, but has different explanations. So Gemara says, michde, since this is the case, let's examine it. Kara'ai, mashma, bein lamar, u vein lamar. There are psukim that bring forth the meaning of one master and bring forth the meaning of the other master. My benaihu, what's the difference between them? Ika benaihu, the Rav Sheshet. The difference between them is regarding Rav Sheshet. The Rav Sheshet, Masar Shinte Lishamaya, that Rav Sheshet assigned to his servant uh, basically the task of being an alarm clock, of, of watching his sleep. Mar it lay the Rav Sheshit. One master held that Rav Sheshit's behavior was appropriate. Umar lit lay the Rav Sheshit. And the other master felt that Rav Sheshit's behavior was not appropriate. Now, Amar Rav Chia. So we go on. Amar Rav Chia, as we continue. What did he say? Bar Ashi. Amar Rav in the name of Rav. Namely, Okay, giving now a new thought. One whose uh, mental condition, let's say, okay, emotional status, right, is not settled. Al yit paleo, should not pray. Why? Mishum shene amar, because we have a pasuk that says, Batsar al yore. That before we said that if one is in uh, sadness, all right, in trouble, okay, he should not render decisions. And render decisions, okay, implies asking God for needs, uh, requesting things from God, uh, relying on God's mercy. That's part of prayer. Rabbi Hanina, Bioma Deratach, Lo Matzle, says the Gemara, that Rabbi Hanina on a day when he was upset, okay, in this case, the implication is uh, stronger, that he wasn't able, he was angry, wasn't able to concentrate. Lo Matzle, he did not pray. Amar Batsar Al Yore, and he cited the Pasuk. When one is in trouble, one doesn't rule. That's good. Right, Ketiv, that's what's written. Mar Ukva, in regard to Mar Ukva, Bioma Deshuta Lohava Nafik Labedina, on a day when it was the south wind. Okay, and why specifically the south wind? Okay, uh, Babylonia says in Art Scrolls note, the south wind blows strongly. It's a storm wind, perhaps. Okay. Uh, I was going to compare it to the Hamsin in Israel. Okay. He did not go to the courthouse. You, you, could, Ma, also, you could also oh. read it that he didn't play tennis. Okay. He, he didn't go out to serve on the court. Oh, thanks. <laughs> <laughs> thanks. Reminds me of an old joke, right? Where was tennis first talked about in the Bible? 
when Joseph served in Pharaoh's courts. That's it. Another one. Very good. <laughs> okay. Amar Rav Nachman says Rav Nachman by Yitzchak. Hilchata bayet saluta kiyoma de astana. Okay. He says that the law is that prayer requires a day when it is the not the north wind but the south wind. Okay. Right, right, requires the clarity of a day of a north wind. Amar Abai says Abai, I amra li aim kariv kutcha. Says Abai, if my stepmother, okay, so to speak, asked me to make make her and bring her some kutach, lo tanai, I wasn't able to study. Okay, in other words, as a youth maybe or growing up. Okay, he was he was concerned about her welfare, and therefore he wasn't able to give his studies adequate uh, attention. Okay, Amar Rava says Rava, e kartsatan kina says if I were bit by a bitten by a louse, right? Lo tenai, I wasn't able to give my studies adequate attention. Mar bere the Ravina. Avda le ame shiva mane le shiva yome. And another example of that is that the Mar, the son of Ravina, said that his mother made him seven garments for seven different days. So this way he wouldn't have to wear repeat clothing, lest uh, louses, you know, be found in them. And bite him. Amar okay. Rav Yehuda says, Rav Yehuda lo ibrei laila ele lishimta. Says Rav Yehuda li, that uh, he says that the evening was not created except for sleep, implying that one should okay, focus their entire day on learning. Amar Rabbi Shimon ben Lakish says lo ibrei sihara. That the moon was not created, ele legirsa, except for learning. In other words, nighttime is also appropriate for learning. Amar Amre Le, they said to him, the Rabbi Zera, Mechadadan Shema'ata, that your lesson is that's a very sharp point. You know, that's a well spoken lesson. Amar Laho. So he said to them, that for my days, he said, is when I, based on that, on my learning during the days. Amrale, and they said to him, now and this is another example. They, it was said to him, Barte the Rav Chista, the daughter of Rav Chista said to her father, the Rav Chista, Lo bai mar minan porta, doesn't the master need to, at least to uh, doze a little bit at night? Amar Lahis responded to her, Hashta atu yome da ariche uktine veninum toba. He said, soon there will come the long days, okay? And the days will become short and I will sleep more. Okay, so implication is, of course, change of seasons is one way of explaining it that the long days in the summer, okay, shorter days in the winter, but the other uh, mafarshim suggests it means while I'm alive, I can study. Eventually, when I'm not Someday alive, alive, there'll be plenty of time to, study. right, sleep. I have nothing else to do. Okay, all right, Amar Rav Nachman. We're about uh, three quarters down the Amud. Rav Nachman Bar Yitzchak says, Anan po'ale diyamame. He says, we, in other words, the sages, are day workers. Okay? In other words, we generally spend our days in study. Anan, we, all right, Anan. Rav Acha Bar Yaakov, he says uh, as follows. Okay, and this was his practice. Yazif upara. He says, I can borrow and return. 
In other words, if I don't have time during the day, okay, for my learning, then I will pay it back at night. In other words, that's when I will fill in my time for learning. Amar Rabbi Elazar, Habam and Haderech, one who comes from the long travel, a journey. Al yitpaleo shlosha yamim. Okay, should not pray for three days. In other words, implying that it took them three days sometimes to get over a long journey. Shneamar, as it says, va'akabtsem el hanahar haba el achva v'nachna sham yamim shlosha va'avina ba'am v'gomer. Okay, again, implying that uh, we rested there three days. Or rather, I gathered them to the river, which comes to Ahava, and we rested there three days, and then I examined the nation. Okay. Avu had Shmuel. Shmuel's father would say, Ki ate when I arrived from a journey, lo matzle tlata yome. I didn't pray for three days. Again, likewise, getting over the situation. Shmuel lo matzle beveta de itbe shikra. Shmuel did not pray in a house where there was liquor. Okay, for some reason. Okay, Gemara's uh, commentaries didn't uh, go into detail. Rav Papa lo matzle. Baveta de it be kharsana. And the Rav Papa did not pray in a house where there was the odor of fried fish. Amar Rabbi Chani. In other words, the, the, all of these are examples where, in other words, it took away from the person's concentration. Right. And, and okay, now, uh, Art Scroll also, as well as Koran, point out that. Uh, as life has changed, this was no longer considered a major issue, okay? And therefore, this practice fell into disuse, and one <coughs> should pray instead, okay? Amar Rabbi Chanina. says, Rabbi Chanina, a new statement. Kol hamit pate bieno, okay, one who can be easily appeased with wine, yesh bo midat, Kono, okay? Namely, that in that case, he uh, basically uh, is considered... Uh, Let's see. Is it either of the... At ease, okay? In other words, at that point, okay, uh, his, uh, you know, he, he can go ahead, okay? And, and behave normally, right? So what happens? Shneamar vayarach Hashem et reach hanichoach v'gomer. Okay. In other words, citing the pasuk that Hashem smelled an odor of the sacrifices, pleasant aroma, and that appeased him. In other words, it brought it was satisfactory. Amar Rabbi Chia says Rabbi Chia kol hamit yashev b'yeno. Right. So he says. Uh, one who uh, settles his mind by having a drink in the morning. Okay. Yesh bo dat shivim zikini. Okay. It's like he has the uh, mindset of the elders, 70 elders of the Sanhedrin. Yayan itan b'shivim otiot. Why? Because the word yayan, gematria, is 10, 10 and 50. Right? It makes 70. 70, 70 letters. Vesod nitan ba'ar shiv emotiot. And the word sod, also spe spelled out in gematria, is 70. And therefore we say, nichnas yayin yatsa sod. Okay, one, one gets a little too drink, drunk. And all the, the secrets, secrets come out. <laughs> come out, exactly. Ama <laughs> Rabbi Hanin. Says true. Rabbi Hanin, the only reason wine was created was to bring comfort to mourners. 
And also, however, it was given in order to uh, provide some sort of appropriate, uh, let's say, uh, response to wicked people. Shneamar, as it says, tnu sechar la'oved v'gomer. Okay? Namely that uh, we're saying in this case, give intoxicating wine. Okay? Uh, well, uh, right. Give intoxicating wine to those who behave in that, uh, to the ones who are lost, to the misbehaviors. Lamar Rabbi Kanan Bar Papa says as follows Kol Sha'ain Yayan Nafshach Betoch Beito Kamayim. Okay, Nishpach Kamayim. Whoever doesn't allow water to flow in his house like wine to flow in his house like water, a no bichlal bracha. He does not necessarily receive uh, appropriate blessings. Shneamar, as it says, uberech et lachmacha veet menecha. Okay, with a, vo- a pasuk that says, Hashem is going to bless your bread and your water. Now, how does he explain it? Ma lechem shenikach bekesef maaser. The same way bread may be purchased with maaser money. Okay, af mayim shenikach bekaf bekesef maaser. So likewise, there must be a kind of water that that also can be purchased with maaser money. Umaynihu, and what might that be? Yayin, it must be wine. The ka kari le mayim, and in this case, like a drasha, he's calling it like water. Okay. Remember, by the way, that they used to in those days. Uh, mixed, right? They had uh, uh, wine that was really like, uh, I don't know, Shapiro's and, or uh, certain kinds of Mug and David that was thick, thick. and they used to mix it. Dilute it. Right? Okay. Kamayim. If the wine is flows in his house like water, Ikebracha, then there is blessing. Ve'ilo, and if not, there is no lo, then there is no blessing. Okay, let's go back now to uh, another statement. B'shloshad varim adam nikar. By three things is a person recognized. B'koso, by how he drinks, by his cup. B'kiso, by his uh, pocket. In other words, how he spends his money. U'beka'aso. And by Very his anger, what makes him angry, right? Va'amrele, and others say, af b'schako, and even by his laughter. Because what does he laugh at? Okay, all right. Having finished our discussion about intoxication, <laughs> the Gemara feels it's about time we get back to our topic. Okay, av eruv. Chatserot and Shituf Mabuot, things like that. Okay? Now, remember we said way back at the beginning that the whole question here is who shares the Chatser and what is considered a valid residence? Okay? In other words, if there are two Jews that share the Chatser and they don't make a Shituf Eruv uh, 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 wrote, then one prohibits the other from carrying into the chatzer. However, let's say that one, there are two people living in the chatzer, and one is a Jew and one is a Gentile. Okay, does the Gentile's presence not making the Eruv wrote does that have an impact on the Jew or not? Okay. So our Gemara now continues. Amar Rav Yehuda, says Rav Yehuda, Amar Rav in the name of Rav. Yisrael v'nachri b'pnimi. We actually here have two different areas, a outer courtyard and an inner courtyard. In the inner courtyard live two people, 
a Jew and a Gentile. In the outer courtyard that gives you access from there to the Rishus Harabim, there is one person living there, a Jew. Okay? So, Yisrael v'nachri b'pnimit, a Jew and a Gentile are in the inner courtyard, v'Yisrael b'chitzona, and the Jew alone Inside. is living in the outer courtyard. Ba'ma'asel ifnei Rebbe v'asar, this situation came before Rebbe, and he forbade, in other words, he said, the Jew in the inner courtyard cannot carry out, okay, to the outer courtyard. Right? And it also came before Rabbi Chia, and he also said it limited it. it right? Now what happened, says the Gemara, he proved Rabba the Rav Yosef. Okay? They were sitting, namely Raba and Rav Yosef, Bishilhe Pirka. They were sitting in the back of the lesson given by Rav Sheshet. Okay? Now it may mean that they were also in the back of the room, okay, in which the lesson was given. Viativ Rav Sheshet, and Rav Sheshet was sitting giving the Shior. Vikamar and he said, Kiman Amra Rav Lishmaate, according to whom do we think that Rav gave this lesson? In other words, on what basis, according to whom did he make a psak? Karabi Meir. Okay? According to Rabbi Meir. Karkish Rabba Reshe. And Rabba nodded his head in agreement. However, Amar Rav Yosef. Rav Yosef says, Tre Gavre, Rav Ravi, Karabanan, these two great rabbis, like these two, Lit U, Baha'i Milta, would they make a mistake in error in such a thing? E Karabi Meir. If we said that they decided according to the view of Rabbi Meir, Lama Li Yisrael Bechitzona. Why then do you even need an Israelite, okay, living in the outer courtyard? In other words, it would have been sufficient just to use the example of the inner courtyard with the Jew and the Gentile, okay? Because Rabbi Meir's opinion is, in that case, the Jew is not able to carry out into his inner courtyard. The key tema, and if you want to say, that this was simply an incident that happened, being described. And they came and asked a shaila of Rav, Pnimi, in regards to the inner courtyard. In that place, what's the status? Okay, he could say to them, Mutar, that it's permitted to carry. The Elamai, so therefore, what's the situation? Rabbi Eliezer ben Yaakov. It must be that Rav, however, was paskening, not, okay, more like, not like Rabbi Meir, but like the view of Rabbi Eliezer ben Yaakov. Ha'amar, who says, Ad sheyu shnei Yisraelim, until there are two Jews living in the same car courtyard, osrin ze el ze, that they can prohibit one to another, okay? If they don't make an Erev Chatzero together. Ele Karabi Akiva. But maybe, on the other hand, he was paskening like Rabbi Akiva. Da Amar Regel Hamuteret Bimkoma, okay? That a foot, or okay? that's permitted in one place, oseret shalobim koma, okay? Renders it prohibited in another place. Namely, the Jew in the inner courtyard could have made a eruv chatzeros, okay? Uh, with the Jew in the outer courtyard. 
would, in doing so, would have permitted him to carry in the outer courtyard, but by doing so, the end result is he's forbidden to carry in his inner courtyard. If that's the case, says Rav Yosef, Lamali Nachri, then why the whole discussion that the other person in the inner courtyard is a Gentile? Afilu Yisrael Mami, even if it were a Jew, that would still be the case. So the Gemara now continues. Ama Rav Huna says, Rav Huna bere the Rav Yoshua. Le'olam ke Rabbi Eliezer ben Yaakov. Okay. We must say that Rav's original, this psaq uh, must have been based on the view of Rabbi Eliezer ben Yaakov regarding the non-Jew, that only when Jews share a courtyard do we have this question of, of uh, prohibition? Ukarabi Akiva. And it also could have been according to the view of Rabbi Akiva. Vahacha Bamayas Kina. And what are we dealing with here? He asks. Kigon She'irvu. Let's say it's a situation where they did make an Eruv of Chatseros. And the reason that it becomes prohibited is because there is a Gentile that limits, that prohibits it. But if there is no Gentile there, then there is no prohibition on the Jew to carry into the courtyard. Now, by mine, Rebbe Eliezer Mirav. We now have another example, a situation where Rabbi Eliezer asks Rav the following, Yisrael v'nachri b'chitzona, the Jew and the Gentile are in the outer courtyard, v'yisrael b'pnimit, and the Jew alone is in the inner courtyard. Mahu, what's the situation there? So Gemara now proceeds to tell us, Hatam, there in that case, Ta'ama Mishum de Shriach de Deyer. There, he says, we have a situation because it's common for people to dwell that way. Demir Tat Nachri, because there is a fear on the part of the Nachri. Okay, what is the fear? The fear is that were he to commit some act against his, the Jew in the outer courtyard, the Jew from the inner courtyard would discover it. The Savar, and he's thinking, Hashta, Ate Yisrael. Here now would come the Jew from the inner courtyard. Va'amarli, and he might say to me, Yisrael dahava gabach, the Jew that was living in the same court, outer courtyard with you. You know, what happened to him? Hecha, where is he? Okay. Aval hacha. But here, in this case, amin I might say to him that the Gentile could answer, nafak, he went out. Azal he went someplace. Odilma, or perhaps, hachanami, here too. Mirtat. Okay. In other words, if they, in, in previous, I'm sorry, in the earlier situation of the inner courtyard where they were shared, the Jew from the outer courtyard could come in and ask. That's why the Gentile might be afraid. If it's reversed, okay, right, and the Jew and Gentile in the outer courtyard, we're not sure if the Jew is going to come out and check on it, right? So, he might say, if the Jew doesn't see the Jew there, the Gentile could argue he left. Or perhaps, says the Gemara, Hachanami here too, Mirtat, the Gentile is afraid. The Savar Hashta, Ate Yisrael, Vechazile, that the Jew would come out and see him doing something to the other Jew in the front courtyard. Amarle. 
Okay, and he said to him, Tain lechacham yechakem od. Okay, basically that is a, a good logic. I right? give knowledge to the wise man and he'll still get wiser. Okay? So in other words, it restricts the non-Jew, okay, living in the inner courtyard, but uh, it also might restrict the non-Jew living in the outer courtyard. Now, we get a new story. Reish Lakish v'talmidei Durav. There was Reish Lakish and some students of Rabbi Hanina. Iklahu lahahu punda. They came to a certain inn. Okay? Apparently they were going to stay there for Shabbat. Okay? What happened though? Velo hava socher. Vahava maskir. And there was no Gentile in this inn from whom they could, so to speak, rent space to make an Eruv. But there was a Gentile innkeeper. Okay? So what's the situation? Amru, and they said, Mahula migarmine, is it possible to rent, okay, space from the landlord, in other words, from the innkeeper? Kol hecha delomatse maslikli. Okay, so the Gemara now tells us, wherever it's possible that the landlord has control over his renters and can put him out, lo tebailach delo igreina. You don't have to ask the question that, okay, that I, okay, I'm sorry, Co and whatever there is a place that the landlord is not able to force the renter out, you don't have to ask the question that one, I can't rent from him. Ki tibau, where you have to ask, hecha de matze maslikle. It's where it's possible for the land the landlord, okay, to put the renter out. My, what's the situation there? Kevan de Matze Maslik, since it's possible we find for him to put the renter out, Agrina, I can rent it. Odilma, or perhaps Hashtamiha, here nevertheless, Ha Lo Salke, okay, maybe. Uh, he's not going to be prepared to leave. Amar lehen reish lakish, says reish lakish to the students, niskor, let's uh, nevertheless rent, okay, we'll, uh, you know, for the, in the inn for the Shabbos. Well, kshenagia eitzel rabotenu shebedarom nish'al lehen. And when we reach uh, the uh, sages in the south will ask them. Atu Shailu the Rabbi Alphas. They went and they asked uh, one of the sages, Rabbi Aphis, okay, Amar Lehen, and he said to them, Yafe Asitim Shesachartim. Okay, you did uh, correctly when you rented rights from the landlord. Now, a new story still building on the same issue, but slightly different. Rabbi Hanina bar Yosef, the Rabbi Chia bar Abba, the Rabbi Asi. Okay, we have three of the sages now. Okay, what happened? With the three sages, again, they came to a certain end. Okay? Now, again, question of renting, okay? Now, in the previous story with Reish Lakish, it's very possible they came on Friday afternoon, okay? Before Shabbat started. However, now in this second story, with these three rabbis, okay, what happens? It's a little different. Namely, Da'ata Nachri, Mari de Pundak Bashabta. When they got there on Friday, let's say, the innkeeper wasn't around. 
he didn't show up, the innkeeper, till Saturday morning. Okay. So the question now becomes, are they permitted to rent space? Okay. In other words, you get space from the innkeeper on Shabbat and therefore still have a valid Eruv, right, for Shabbos. Amru, they said, Mahula Migar Mine. They said, Is it possible for us to rent from him? Why? Because this was their thinking. Maybe, says the Gemara, so dami, that one renting space for the is similar to the situation of one uh, establishing an Eruv, namely. Man ma'arev mi ba'od yom, the same way that one must establish his Erev while it is still daytime. Af socher mi ba'od yom. So one must also rent the space while it's still daytime. O Dilma, or perhaps socher, one can rent it. Kimavatel vishut dami. And we say, that that is similar to one relinquishing one's rights, okay? In other words, giving up the option. And when a person gives up their rights to that space, then that does not prohibit others from using that courtyard, from using that area. Mama vatel reshut vafilu b'shabat, so the same way that one can relinquish their rights, even on Shabbos, af socher v'afilu b'Shabbat. So likewise, there, one could rent the space even on Shabbos. Gemara continues. Rabbi Chanina bar Yosef amar niskor, and so Rabbi Chanina bar Yosef says, let's rent it. Right? For Rabbi Asi, Amar Lonescor. Rabbi Asi disagreed and said, no, we shouldn't lease the rights on Shabbos. Amar Laho, Rabbi Chia Bar Abba. And Rabbi Chia Bar Abba said to them both, Nesmoch al divrei zaken v'niskor. Let's rely on the opinion of our elder, namely Rabbi Chanina Bar Yosef, and we'll lease it. There's no question about it being I'm doing it on Shabbos. That's part of the issue. In other words, that's part of the interesting point. In this Not only for the era, but for the, just sort of doing business on Shabbos. Right. So what happens? Let's see what the Gemara tells us. Okay, as they say in the movie, stay tuned. Right? Okay. Atu, they went. Shailu lele Rabbi Yochanan. They went and asked Rabbi Yochanan the question. Amar lehen. Now we got to continue a little bit. Right, Marvin? Just for you? Yeah. Okay. <laughs> Absolutely. You're waiting with bated breath. No, I can't right? wait to talk. I yeah. can't wait to talk. Yeah. To Look what Rabbi Yochanan says. You just him. It was appropriate. You acted correctly that you leased the rights from the idolater on Shabbat. Okay? Now, let's see what happens as we continue a little bit further, guys, right? Tahu ba Nahardai. The sages of Nahardai wondered about Rabbi Yochanan's response. Umi ma Rabbi Yochanan hachi? Is it really possible that Rabbi Yochanan could have said this? Vahama Rabbi Yochanan. But wasn't it Rabbi Yochanan, <coughs> excuse me, who said as follows, so her kimarev dami, my love, that one who leases the property is similar to one who establishes an eruv, okay, and therefore, isn't this the similarity we're talking about? Mama arev yom, the same way that one must make their eruv while it is still daylight, okay. Right before Shabbat starts, right. so, so, 
So then doesn't one have to, so to speak, lease the property while it's still daylight? For Shabbos, right? Right? Lo, no, says the Gemara. Mama arev va'afilu bepachot mishave pruta. No, where one can make their eruv, even with something less than a penny's worth, afsocher bepachot mishave pruta. So one may lease the property even less than a penny worth. And you're not over. Umama arev afilu schiro ulekito. And whereas one can make an eruv, or I'm going to rephrase it, whereas the eruv may be made, even we saw before, by one's harvester or one's paid laborer, afsocher afilus chiro lekito. So one likewise can lease the property, even though it's through one's uh, paid laborer or one's harvester. Okay? We call that a sublet, right? You rent from the renter, right. in a sense. Okay? Umam arev. Okay, so the Gemara continues and raises the question. Umam arev chamisha sheshruyin b'chatzeh achat. And likewise, whereas where there are five who are sharing a eruv, okay, living off the same courtyard, echad me'arev al yedei kulan, one is able to make the eruv for all of them all, socher nami, okay, the renter also, chamisha sheshruin b'chatzer achad, five who are sharing off the same courtyard, echad socher ayadei kulan, one is able to lease the property on behalf of them all. Okay? Now, Tehiba. But still, we wonder about this. Mm-hmm. Rabbi Eli- Eliezer, he also wondered about this. Ama, Rabbi Zera, says Rabbi Zera, my tia, the Rabbi Eliezer, what is the issue? That uh, that he Rabbi Eliezer was wondering about, okay. Amar Rav Sheshet says Rav Sheshet Gavra Rabba Karabi Zera Lo Yada Mai Tahaye the Rabbi Eliezer. A mm-hmm. great person says Rav Sheshet. A great person like Rabbi Zera doesn't know what Rabbi Eliezer was wondering about in terms of the situation. Okay, what bothered him, he says, was the response, the attitude of his teacher, Shmuel. The Amar Shmuel, for Shmuel said, any place where one can prohibit another and they proceed and go ahead and make an Eruv, Mevatlin, it's possible to nullify the uh, participation, okay, if we can use that word, all right, okay, or to, uh, to relinquish the rights, maybe that's a better term, okay, in that case. Ma'arvin, if they make an Eruv, Ve'enosri, okay, and that doesn't prohibit one to another. Osrin ve'en ma'arvin, or they can prohibit one another, and they don't make an eruv. Ein mevatlin, we are not able to arrange for the relinquishment of of rights. Kol makom she'osrin u'ma'arvin, mevatlin, any place where they are able to prohibit one another and make an Eruv, Mivatlin, we say they can relinquish rights. Kigon, Shtei Chatserod, Zo Lifnimi Zo. As in the case of two courtyards, one inside of another. 
מערבים ואין אוסרים. If they make an עירוב, and they don't prohibit one another, אין מבטלים. They cannot relinquish rights. Why is that? We'll see. כגון שני חצי רוב, it's the example of two courtyards, ופתח אחד ביניהם, and there's one opening, one gateway between them. Okay? Why? Because the persons in the inner one can close the door, as we saw previously, and therefore they're separate and they don't have any part of the Erev in the outer courtyard. Osrin ve'en ma'arvin, okay? In that case, they can prohibit one another and they don't make an Erev. E'en mevatlin, okay? We say they can't relinquish their rights. La'atuye mai, to include what? Lav la'atuye nachri. Doesn't that come to include the example of someone who has a Gentile living in the same chatzer with two Jewish neighbors? Ve'ida'ata me'etmo. Okay. And we say here, okay, and if the Gentile arrived yesterday, lo ger me'etmo, let him, so to speak, rent at least the rights from the day before. Okay, Ella rather, we'll go on just a little bit. Okay, Ella loved the Ate Beshabta. No, we say the situation was such that the Gentile arrived on Shabbos. Ukatani, okay, and nevertheless, it taught Osrin ve'en ma'arvin, ein mevatlin shmamina. Okay, that it taught that if the two Jews are able to prohibit one another and they did not make a Eruv, Ein Mavatlin, we cannot relinquish rights, okay, Shmamina. And that's indeed what we learn from this. Okay. Now, um, we're gonna stop here, okay. Gemara, I'll just give you a, a point or two, and then we'll finish up. Okay, the Gemara is going to continue, right? Okay, and try to go into more detail, okay, this particular lesson that uh, Shmuel has given, and try to clarify whether it is truly what Shmuel said, okay, or, or not. And it's going to be a back and forth between Abaye and Rav Yosef, okay, uh, in more detail, all right, and then we'll go into continuing a couple of other uh, discussions on uh, relinquishing rights, okay, in that situation, and how did it apply to what we have covered so far, all right? So we're going to, as I say, we'll stop there, okay, and... Uh, I will pick up um, Friday morning. Okay, everybody stay well. Okay, and uh, do the best you can. If need be, you tell me I need to review a little bit as well. I'm I don't sure. understand the whole thing with this Clara and Shabbos stuff. Okay. In other words, the implication. Uh, the only thing that I saw was when he said it was a Pachas Vesheva Pruta. Was right. that. That, that took it out of the category that you're not over on because it's less than Shava Pruta. Right. It's le- number one, it's less than Shava Pruta. So it wasn't, it wasn't considered like, so to speak, real money. Right. Okay. In other words, they could have said, can we put a utensil of ours in that location? Uh-huh. Okay. That's what we saw before. Right. So they put a utensil of theirs then they can be considered like a worker for that right. Gentile. Right. Therefore, they, that entitles them in order to be able to make the... Make the error. Make the error. Right. Okay? Oh, okay. Right. okay? All right, guys. Very Everybody, okay. take care and stay well. You too. Okay. A couple of days off. Okay.
Right. So. Uh, okay. Bye. Okay. okay. Ted, how was your time away? Good. Very good. Yeah. Really enjoyed it. Yeah. yeah. Good. Oh, that's nice. Yeah. We had a big chunk of the family there. <laughs> really a lot you, of. You're, you're in Orlando? In Orlando, yeah. We had a, a house with 12 bedrooms. That's all? But that's not a house. That's a hotel. Yeah. Almost. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, each bed, each bedroom had its own private bathroom in it. Oh my God, there's, that's a lot of plumbing. <laughs> there's a lot. There, there's streets, street after street, built up that way. Oh my, they're there just to catch us, I guess. Wow, oh, <laughs> and it was crowded. Yeah. A lot of suckers up. Yeah, yeah and the, in the front of the house, and the driveway, in the back of the house. Well, put them in the parking spot too. Huh? Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> not in the street. That's just not in the street. <laughs> Well, they gave him 10 days to take it down, right? Yeah, that's it. <laughs> All right, take care. Have a good All day. All be well. Okay. Regards. Well. Avi, how are you doing? Can't complain. Very good. They got, uh, in, in your building, I don't know whose apartment it is that they're working on. Uh, I think it could be Walensky's, though, because I know he had work coming up. They have this Dr. Rubble here. Have you seen that? I've seen that truck before, yeah. Yeah, and they bring a... Uh, they bring about 10 or 12 guys in and then... The, and, a, and a great big cart. In one hour, the, and it's, on, it's on wheels. Two hours, it's gone. Yeah, yeah and, and no uh, no dumpster that's in and rented. They, nope, they, and they, they take it out the, in The big cart, and they take it out, and uh, they're good. They're usually pretty clean, too, with their work. They, uh, I think that's Michael who uses them yeah. as the rubble. It's a good deal. He's a guy. It's just all they do is demo the place out, and uh, that's it. Yeah, yeah. And they and, and they take the rubble with them when they go. They don't, nothing. Is zero left. I mean, they got one guy in the truck, and they have uh, four guys going up and down, and two guys in the apartment, and that's it. Yeah. Can I okay. talk to Harvey? No. <laughs> Harvey, oh, you're wow. trouble. Harvey, you know? I have to take that light out of my front door. I, I'm a I'm a prisoner in my apartment at night. Okay. Anytime I'll open that light, I yeah. get these tiny little bugs in that go into my water, that go into my wine, that go into everything, and it, it's it's really making me very 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 uncomfortable. Mm -hmm. Okay. Send me an email. What? Send me something in writing. Oh, okay. Okay. I certainly will. Thank you very much. Yeah, I hope well. you're feeling better. All is well. Teddy says you're going in for surgery, though. You remember your paint? <laughs> My paint, yes. I've been working. She's not an easy lady, this uh, Judy Millington. <laughs> but um, we've been working, and the letters definitely help. She, um, she even made a comment to Teddy that some of them were really very well written. Okay. So, so we'll we'll see. It's still um, in process. I'm um, getting Teddy to work on it. <laughs> anyway, hope all should be well. Take care. Thank you. Thank you. Bye. Okay. I'll speak to you. All right. Hey, thank you. Let's close ourselves out of here.